Daniel 8 and verse 14. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then what's going to be cleansed? What sanctuary are we interested in in the last days, earth or heaven? Heaven, the heavenly sanctuary. What does a day represent in Bible prophecy? Ezekiel 4, 6 makes it clear. I have appointed thee one day for a year. Ezekiel 4, verse 6. So this is 2,300 what? Years. So number 30, in what year? <laughs> In what year did Jesus begin the judgment in the heavenly sanctuary? Daniel 8, 14. So for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary begins at the close of the 2,300 year prophecy. When does this 2,300 year prophecy begin? Daniel 9, 25 makes it very clear that it would be when the decree would go forth to build Jerusalem. Daniel 9, 25, when the decree would go forth to rebuild Jerusalem. Well, when was the decree to rebuild Jerusalem issued? Ezra 7 makes it very clear. In the seventh year of the reign of King Artaxerxes, according to history, 457 BC. What does BC mean? Before Christ. Now, this is very significant. 457 BC. So, even Sir Isaac Newton believed this. He believed that the time prophecy of Daniel 9 began in 457 BC. And so also the one in Daniel 8. I issue a decree that all those of the people of Israel and the priests and Levites in my realm who volunteer to go up to Jerusalem may go with you as a seven. Sir Isaac Newton was a brilliant English scientist, mathematician, and Bible scholar. And he believed in 457 BC. So 2300 years from 457 BC to decree to restore Jerusalem 2300 years later runs out in 1844 that's when Jesus went into the most holy place that's when the books were open that's when the hour of God's judgment began that's more than 120 years isn't it and I can hear people saying Noah you've been preaching the same prophecy stuff for 120 years yeah right yeah right and then when they started to feel drops of rain, they realized what he said was the truth. So friends, we've been living in what is known as the cleansing of the sanctuary. What in the world would need to be cleansed in heaven? Heaven is holy. Heaven is pure. There can only be one thing that needs to be cleansed. And that's in the books that record all the sins or the names that need to be removed. But once, once the sins are blotted out or those who don't want to give up their sin, their name is blotted out. Once that takes place, the cleansing of the sanctuary is complete. And Jesus comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he knows who he's coming for. And so friends, how long have we been living in the hour of God's judgment? Ever since 1844. In the last days, the focus is not on the earthly sanctuary. It is on the heavenly one. So which sanctuary should we focus on? Now look at this scripture. This is absolutely one of my favorite scriptures. I stand in a church that is preaching Revelation eleven nineteen, and ask the average Christian if they've even heard this, but it's here in the Bible. Revelation eleven nineteen. Then the temple of God was open in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, earthquakes, and great hail. Friends, where is Jesus? In the most holy place by the ark of the covenant. The temple of God is open in heaven. Where is Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary? In the most holy place. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascends, ascended before God from the angel's hand. That's going on right now. But soon probation closes. Number 35, what does the cleansing of the sanctuary mean? Blotting out of the record of sin, blotting out the names of the unconverted from the book of life. What are done with the names of some of those written in the book of life? We already looked at that scripture, blotted out. And so when did Gabriel tell Daniel people would understand these prophecies in the time of the end? So how was this heavenly judgment foreshadowed or symbolized in the Old Testament? What does the Bible say about this heavenly judgment and the cleansing of the sanctuary through symbolism in the Old Testament? Okay, just about finished. This is right the way we're ending. Every day, people, people's sins were atoned for. 
They would confess their sins over. They would confess their sins over innocent lamb. The lamb was offered up. And the sins were thus transferred from the sinner to what? To the lamb. And there was a record, therefore, of sin in the blood. And there's a record of sin now in the books. BB. Blood, books. Remember, things were symbolized there. And the reality is that all sins we commit are recorded in heaven. When you confess them, forgiven is written next to it. And when your name is brought up in judgment, all of the record is gone, wiped out. So I'm not worried that my sins are going to somehow come back to haunt me. As long as I'm in Christ, I don't have to worry about that. Do you recognize the good news? Amen. So I want you to notice every day, every day, he would come and sprinkle blood before the veil. Thus an accumulation, what was taking place symbolically, the sin was transferred from the guilty sinner to the innocent lamb. Then the high priest brought some of the blood into the holy place. Symbolically, the blood contained the record of sin. Thus the heavenly sanctuary was being polluted by the record of sin. So why did the high priest go into the most holy place in the final day of the year? Because the daily accumulation of the record of sin made a yearly cleansing of the sanctuary necessary. The earthly sanctuary was cleansed once a year at the end of the biblical calendar, the day of atonement, and he was only in the most holy place one day at the end of the biblical calendar. And so I'm here to tell you, it was a, the Yom Kippur, very solemn event. And the trumpet blasted to announce the beginning of the cleansing of the sanctuary. For any person who is not afflicted of soul on that same day, that person shall be cut off or cut off from his people. Anyone who did not humble themselves or repent of sin during the cleansing of the sanctuary on earth were shut out of the camp of Israel, hence a time of judgment. Therefore, this is important. Therefore, the cleansing of the sanctuary is a time of judgment. Every Israelite knew, my last slide, every Israelite knew that when the high priest was cleansing the sanctuary from the record of sin, in the most holy place that everyone was being judged. Friends, right now, the judgment is almost to a close. Now is the time to say, Jesus, I surrender all. Shall we stand for prayer? Oh, my Father in heaven, thank you for your watch care. Oh, Jesus, thank you that you are our attorney, our advocate, our mediator, our great high priest. As we go here tonight, may we go covered by the blood of the Lamb. Right, everyone? By the blood of the Lamb. If you believe in the blood, say amen. If you trust in Jesus, say amen. We leave now, Lord, knowing that we're in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Seven BC. What does BC mean? Before Christ. Now this is very significant. For
Sir Isaac Newton was a brilliant English scientist, mathematician, and Bible scholar, and he believed in 457 BC. So 2,300 years from 457 BC at the decree to restore Jerusalem, 2,300 years later, runs out in 1844. That's when Jesus went into the most holy place. That's when the books were open. That's when the hour of God's judgment began. That's more than 120 years, isn't it? And I can hear people saying, Noah, you've been preaching the same prophecy stuff for 120 years. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And then when they started to feel drops of rain, they realized what he said was the truth. So.